Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to make a mini project called multiple choice quiz. Let's see what it is we're going to make. So if I run my program like this, I can see this question, largest city in the world, please select one of the following. I have three options. I can either choose them by number, let's say two, that is Tokyo, press enter. Next question comes up, fastest land animal, cheetah, jaguar, tiger or I can just write it down. I don't need to be exactly like reusing capitals like this. Press enter. The third question, largest country in the world. It must be Russia. Second choice, press enter. And your score is three. Cool. Now, it is so easy to make this using Pi Input Plus. I have a video on Pi Input Plus and how to validate input. Uh, well, actually, the, the most recent one besides this one. Uh, the previous video is about that. Now, let's see what it is and how we can work with it. Okay, so I'm using replit.com. So you can either, uh, well, let me show you how it is. So if you make an account, a free account, you can use this one as your ID, online ID, then you can run press new REPL, choose Python, give it a name, and then create REPL. Because I already have a lot of REPLs here, so I'm going to choose my own input, and this is what you get. You can also use your own local machine ID. And once you have this, the first thing you need to do is go to this part, Packages, and here search for Pi Input Plus. Then you should see a plus icon, you click on it, it gets installed. The other way is to get to the shell or terminal on your machine as well and just type pip install pi input plus and press enter and after a couple of know, minutes maybe then you're good to go. Okay, so uh, let me get rid of this. All right. Now once you've done that, you have to import it. You have to import pi input plus and I've given it alias or nickname so that I can reference it as pi from now on. Now let's see what it is. So for multiple choices uh, we can have a variable let's just call it choice and then in we're going to reference this by pi ip pi ip dot all of the functions or methods in this module start with input and this is going to be an input menu like capital M and inside this we're going to have our choices so the easiest way is to have them as a list. So I can say John, uh, Jack, and Mary. So I have three choices here. And if I press run, I run this, and wait a bit so that these packages are installed here. Okay, now this is what I get. Please select one of the following and these choices. Remember, I didn't write this, you see? I never wrote this, so this is generated because I'm using the menu and then all of these options are listed like this. Now here if I choose something like John and press enter, John is going to be saved or stored into choice. Then choice, this variable would be John. And if I do something else, let's say like Gary, press enter, Gary is not a valid choice. So this validates it for us and then again we have to choose it. Okay, I should stop this here. Now, I can also have some question up here, like your, I don't know, like print uh, your favorite name, for example, something like that. And if I run it, you can see the question here, your favorite name, please select this. But now I want to have also numbers, these lists as numbered. So what I can do is to give it another argument here, I can say numbered numbered equal true. Now if I run this, you should see that this is going to be numbered now, one, two, three. So I can either use numbers like one to refer to John or I can just write John and then it would be the same. It would be saved as John into choice. Okay, now that we know how it is, now let's add make our questions and or cho also choices. So let's have the first question as print uh, largest city. And then 
let's have our answer and our answer going to be um, let's say C1 for example uh, PYIP dot input menu and here let's have the options so let's say Tokyo um, Paris and Amsterdam so whatever the user chooses so, so remember this is an input function that is it prompts the user to enter something whatever they choose is going to be saved into C1 and let's just make it also numbered so numbered equals true now let's have the second question let's print fastest animal and then again something like this let's just copy and paste it here c2 and animals so cheetah tiger and snail yeah and then the next and the last question let's have uh, largest country and the choices are going to be c3 and countries let's just say China Russia and Canada okay these three now um, so we have our choices here that is whatever the user chooses here goes into C1 but how can we know that this is correct or not so let's also have a list of the correct options so let's just call it correct it's going to be a list so for the first one what was that tokyo is the correct choice so tokyo the second one it's going to be cheetah and the last one is going to be russia okay so these are the correct choices now we need to put c1 c2 and c3 also inside a list or something like that so that we compare these that is to compare the first choice with tokyo and see if the user chose Tokyo and the correct choice is Tokyo it means it is correct if the second one they choose Tiger whereas the correct choice is Cheetah then it's not correct so we are going to take users input and compare it with these so for that C1 C2 and C3 are the three choices that the user makes right so let's just say user equals C1 C2 and C3 and this is going to create a tuple or tuple for us so let's say so this is going to create a tuple for us now that we have this tuple what we can do is to map these onto each other using zip function I have another video on zip function so zip function basically works like this let me show you how it is so let's just have a total and zip uh, this is how you use it you use the word zip in parentheses and then we use the lists or whatever uh, like either lists or dictionary no, not dictionary tuples that we want their item to be next to each other and paired with each other so here I would say correct and user what this means is that it will go through correct takes the first item in correct and goes through user uh, takes the first item in user and pairs them together in something like this in a set so you would see something like that you would see uh, I don't know, let's say Tokyo and whatever C1 it is then next one you would have comma uh, I don't know what is cheetah and the second one C2 you know something like this so what we can do then we will compare these okay now let's go through this zip so we get a zip object here now I can make a for loop I say for i and j and remember because for i and j in uh, total because we have two options here right we have a Tokyo and C1 then we have cheetah and C2 then we have Russia and C3 so this would be i this would be j if i equals j that is what we have Tokyo is equals uh, is equal to what the user gets then we need to add it to a score 
so we don't have a score yet so let's just say score is zero for now and let's here let's say score plus equals one that is we add one to the score if these match that is what the user inputs and what we have if they're equal the same then add one to the score which is zero already else well let's just say continue and now here let's print uh, your your score is like um, score yeah okay now let's see how this works so let's stop this right again so largest city let's go with Paris which is wrong fastest animal cheetah which is correct largest country russia which is correct so we should get two actually and your score is two one last time and this time let's go uh, let's do all of them correctly so one tokyo is the largest city fastest animals animals cheetah number one largest country is russia number two and your score is three cool that was so easy wasn't it in almost 10 minutes we made this so you can add a lot of items to it, a lot of more questions to this. Yeah, that was it. Thank you very much for watching and listening.